The second part that I'd like you to discuss briefly is what is AID, AID, Africans in the Diaspora? Please. Oh, thank you. I will try to answer both in one. Okay. <laughs> Hello everyone, um, I'm humbled and honored to be here today alongside such great leaders from the East African diaspora community. And guess what, there are many, many other leaders who's not, who are not in this room right now, but who are still doing very important work. And I want to say thank you to the White House and to the State Department for recognizing our collective efforts as a broader community. So thank you. Um, let me start with my story. I came to America when I was 11 from Ethiopia. I was super excited when I arrived. I wanted to take advantage of all the opportunities that this great country has to offer. But I also wanted to share the story of my own community, my friends, my country, my continent, that I was so proud of and that I cared so much about. Little did I know when I arrived that my story had already been told for me. Mm -hmm. And it was told in 1985 through the Ethiopian famine and in the way that it was covered. So as soon as I got to school, what questions was I answering? Well, did you eat? <laughs> well, you, were you friends with flies? What did you do? Where did you live? I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. And then I would go visit friends and relatives who were actually born in America, and sometimes they would pass for other nationalities, like the least, not to have to answer those questions. And from that moment when I said, no, I'm going to dedicate my life to telling a different story story of Africa that I know, that I love, an Africa that creates, an Africa that's entrepreneurial, driven, an Africa where Africans are in charge of their own agency and development. <laughs> so I dedicated the rest of my life to studying Africa, traveling to Africa, <laughs> living in Africa, <laughs> working on Africa through international development, grassroots, philanthropic, and advocacy organizations. And right now, um, my most recent job actually was as a senior program officer for Global Fund for Children, where I worked with hundreds of civil society organizations that are indigenous, that were started by Africans, that are at the forefront of social change in their communities. And I said, wow, how come we don't hear their stories here? And then I would look around in meetings and spaces within the philanthropy and say, wait, we Africans send $40 billion a year home in remittances. We've got resources. We are the most educated immigrant group in America. We know what we're talking about. How come we're not in these spaces at, as the leaders of change? So I decided to make a shift in my career to start an organization called Africans in the Diaspora, AID, which will focus on unleashing the philanthropic and intellectual capital of the African diaspora community to support social change in Africa. Now, what does that mean in English? Really, it means mobilizing the resources of Africans to invest in social change organization in Africa it's getting Africans who are experts, who've got skills to go back and volunteer with these organizations so that they can build their capacity. And it's also using our collective voices and our collective power to tell our own story as Africans who care about our continent. And to get to more light, well, and as you all know, in the summer of 2011, news broke out about the Horn of Africa food crisis. And immediately I said, oh no, not again. <laughs> I don't want our little sisters, our cousins, to have to tell the same story that I had to tell growing up in America. And I started to see images of naked children on newspaper headlines. I started to see people talk about saving Africa, saving Somalia, saving the Horn. And I said, we don't need to be saved. We're here. We're already doing the work. We need to tell a different story. So along with other members of the African diaspora community, we created Horn Lights, an online platform that shares nuanced, diverse, and dignified perspectives on the Horn of Africa. How do we do that? We have a community section where we ask members of the Horn of Africa diaspora to own and tell their stories, to say we deserve a platform and a space to amplify them individually. And in doing so, in showing the diverse set of identities, ethnicities, experiences, passions, drives, we start to reshape the monolithic way in which the Horn has been represented up to this point. And we also have blogs that are more rigorous, that look at issues affecting the region and that are thematically organized. We just finished one theme, which focused on images and representation. And we're actually moving to the next theme, which is focusing on the role of Africans, where we will highlight Africans on the continent and in the diaspora that are doing work to affect change in the Horn of Africa and to respond to the most recent crisis. So yes, everybody on this panel will be on <laughs> so, I think I answered your question. 